Using desktop workflows, you can map the agent desktop to your own specialized business processes. Workflows go far beyond the basic presentation of workspaces by connecting them to other workspaces, scripts, decisions, and actions. Our intuitive workflow designer makes it easy to develop a work environment tailored to each staff profile. After completing this tutorial, you'll be familiar with the basic features and concepts used when working with desktop workflows. Desktop workflows extend to the functionality of workspaces and scripts, so you should be familiar with workspaces and scripts before you begin working on desktop workflows. A desktop workflow is a sequence of workspaces, scripts, decisions, and actions that can be used in place of an individual workspace for each editor within a profile. Desktop workflows are represented as flow diagrams using a variety of elements, events, conditions, and even other embedded workflows connected together to form a logical order. Workflows start at the entry point, then follow the flow in the direction of the arrows. The base component of a workflow diagram is the element. Elements vary by shape according to their functions. User interface elements signify items that require staff member interaction such as workspaces, scripts, and other embedded workflows. Automation elements trigger events that run in the background, such as setting field values and creating and saving records. Load change elements require staff members to perform a search, such as loading a record or associating a record with another record. Decision elements evaluate conditions to branch the flow across two or more paths based on conditions that you define. Most elements feature an icon and two text labels to help you identify the element's function. The top label contains the element's name, which may update to reflect the function you define for the element. For instance, in the case of a workspace element, the element name may update to display the name of the workspace used. The name can also be customized by simply clicking the text of the label and typing a new name. The bottom label displays the working record. The term working record is used to describe the particular record that will be acted upon by the element, such as an incident, contact, opportunity, or task. When a staff member opens a record in a desktop workflow, it is loaded into a memory space called the record pool. When additional records are opened in the same workflow session, those records are held in the same common record pool. If more than one record of the same type is open in the same record pool, the working record is used to specify which record will be acted upon in an element, such as the initial incident, initial contact, last incident, and last contact. In this case, the Working Record button group will expand with additional buttons so you can select the initial record, last record, or a record named elsewhere in the flow. Workflow elements define the actions and decisions that will be taken in your flow. However, you must also define the sequence in which they will occur. The logical sequence of a flow diagram is described by connecting one element to another, starting with the entry point. To connect elements to each other, simply hover over the first element, click an anchor, and drag a connection to an anchor on the second element. You can also click a blue arrow on an element to automatically connect to an adjoining element. The direction of the connector arrows indicates the sequence of actions. Automation elements, like the entry point, don't require user interaction. They flow automatically to the next element and do not wait for any event. But to advance from other elements, such as this workspace, you must define an event that triggers the connection. The events we can choose from vary based on the fields and controls that appear in the workspace. For this reason, we must first select a workspace to associate with the workspace element.
Next, we'll select the outgoing connector. On the Path Tools tab, click Add Events. Click Add next to the event you want to trigger the connection. Click OK. If you want the event to advance the flow only under certain conditions, you can add one or more conditions under which the event will follow the path. Click Add Conditions. Click Add next to the condition you want to place on the event. Click Field. Click the Field drop-down menu. Expand Incidents and select Status. Leave the Operator Value field set to the default and select Unresolved from the Value drop-down menu. Click OK. Click OK to save the condition. The connector will now be followed when the record in the preceding workflow element is saved without closing, if the status of the incident is unresolved. Decision elements can have two or more outgoing connectors, depending on the type of decision being evaluated. Yes-No decisions evaluate a set of one or more conditions that you define. If all of the conditions match, the Yes path is taken. If any of the conditions do not match, the No path is taken. When you base your decision on a field with multiple values, you can branch the flow to as many paths as there are selectable values in the field. If you don't want to create paths for all field's values, you can select the Include a Value for Other checkbox to provide a single anchor for all remaining values. An outgoing connection anchor appears on the element for each value you defined, and you can now branch your flow to different elements accordingly. In addition to the base set of elements we've discussed, the comment element lets you add notes to your diagram to describe its design. Simply drag a comment element from the ribbon to the canvas, resize it appropriately, and click it to type your text. If you want, you can draw a connector from a comment element to another element in your flow. Comment connectors use a dotted line to indicate that the comment element has no impact on the flow of action. Now that you are familiar with the basic components that comprise desktop workflows, you'll be able to analyze and understand a basic flow diagram.